with two others, uh, almost six years ago now, sat down around the table and said, we need to do something. That's it. We need to do something. Because the country's in a bit of a mess, and it's only going to get worse. And it's been getting worse, so we've got to do something. What do you reckon, boy? I said, yeah, okay, let's do something. So they got a little flip chart, and they just started writing names. What should we call this organisation? Let's call it Britain First. That's a good, good show. Okay. And what, what do we stand for? Well, we stand against mass immigration. We stand for British people. We stand against Islamic extremism, Islamification of Britain. Imagine this. I'd love to have been at the meeting. I would. Three men, six years ago, were responsible for what is now the fastest growing political movement in this country. Just get your head around that a minute, because each and every one of you are involved in that progress. The fastest, and when I say it's fast, it's so fast, it's almost out of our control. We are struggling to keep up with the influx of members and supporters that we're getting. We did make time to thank Donald Trump for his support. <laughs> But it is going absolutely crazy. Do you know why? It's because all of you lovely people and our wonderful leader all stand for common sense. All stand for putting our people first, putting our nation first, putting Christianity back into the homes of our people, back into the hearts of our people. And the reason this even exists is because this man was brave enough and courageous enough and driven enough to get off of his arse and say, you know what, I could carry on working, earning decent money, have a 2.4 children lifestyle, or I could become probably the biggest target in the UK and say the right thing and do the right thing. And thank the Lord that he decided to do the latter. This man I am proud to have worked with now for four and a half years. He has led us through the most traumatic times and the most pleasurable times, i.e. this week. We've been standing outside the most dangerous of situations and we've stood with some of the most renowned politicians in the country because of the movement that this man built. Can I have every single one of you on your feet as we gladly welcome our party leader, Paul Goldie. doing all of the uh, hard grafting today. So we can have a little round of applause. Yeah. I'd like everyone to thank uh, Gary Senskill for operating the camera. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank everyone else for coming. I'd like to thank Jake for chipping in today, doing a lot of the donkey work. So a big round of applause. For thank you. I'd like to thank all of you for turning up today, okay, because this is probably, since we launched this movement, this is the most important meeting we've had, because this really is the start of our transition from Patriot Street Army to mass political party in this country, and that's what we're aiming for, that's what we're going to do. Look at my face, look in my eyes, we are going to become Britain's third political party. It will take a lot of work, a lot of hard graft, but I can tell you now, we will get there, okay? 
I'll come on to a few things about the, the state of the right wing of politics in this country uh, a bit later on. But as Jada said, I vividly remember in a cold office in, on the outskirts of Belfast in 2011, all the way back then, sitting there with three people. There's me, there was two others. We were the founding members of this movement. One is not with us, well, he's had to retire because of ill health. Well, another one has jacked it in and he's gone off and done other things. So I'm the only one left. But here we are in two, late 2017, and we are standing on the cusp of great things in this country. Yes. Great things. And the powers that be know it. Yeah. Because they are throwing everything but the kitchen sink at myself and at Jada and at this movement to try and shut us up. But persecution will not work. You name me one revolutionary anti-establishment movement in history that suffered because of persecution, effectively. None of them. Because when you're persecuted, other people do not like it. And they start to listen to you. And they feel sympathy and support for you. <coughs> so they join you and get involved. That's why <coughs> Britain First has got two million supporters around the world online. Two million. If you took every single political party in Britain and took their social media presence and combined them into one, it still would not match the organic support that this movement has achieved in a mere six and a half years. Wow. I have lost track of the amount of times we've been in the High Court, in the Crown Court, in Magistrates Court, we've had injunctions, we've had restraining orders, we've had huge fines, legal costs, arrests, raids, We've been forced to sign on, we've, we've had dodgy bowel conditions thrown at us, we've been prosecuted, we've got convictions. It's not going to work. I don't know who is pushing in the government, in the establishment, in the hierarchy for this campaign of persecution against Britain first. But it's not bloody working, is it? No, no. Because here we are, growing, getting worldwide media attention, and I know for a fact the only scenario that seems reasonable to explain what has happened this week is that the President of the United States, it came across his desk that a citizen in the United Kingdom was going to be facing jail for criticising Islam and his way of bringing attention to this issue and poking the British government was to do not one retweet, which could be classed as an oversight, but three consecutive retweets. They weren't just a retweet. That was him saying to the British government, what the hell are you doing to this woman for just yeah. criticising Islam, Islam and exercising her right to freedom of speech? Yeah. Okay? <laughs> As she said, no doubt about it. Clear all the cobwebs from your head, all the doubts. Because the President of the United States knows what I and her are going through. He knows. That's what this was all about. If it was an oversight, or he didn't know what he was doing, or someone else in his staff, or something like that, they would have been deleted, wouldn't they? They stuck to his guns. And he must have said, do not delete those retweets. And it sent the government of this country into a spastic, bloody fit, hasn't it? Love <laughs> <laughs> yeah? it. We turn on the telly, and it's questions in Parliament, speeches, angry MPs waving their little fingers <laughs> at the cameras. Exactly, Steve. I could not put it a pretty head on my side. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about Shakespeare and there were our friends in the church. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look particularly bothered about all the name calling and the persecution? Does Jada? I mean, do they honestly think that one day we're going to go, oh, this is getting too much? Right. Let's jack it in. <laughs> to be honest, exactly, we love it, we thrive on it. <laughs> because when I was 16 and I first got involved in patriotic politics in this country, I made an oath, a decision that's, that's been with me ever since. I said, this is, I'm not having this anymore. Okay, it's as simple as that. As a man, I, I will give up my life, I will sacrifice my freedom. 
I will sacrifice my own future to build a future for future, for future generations of our people. <coughs> so when the government comes along and starts to persecute me or Jada, when they try to arrest us, and we're subjected to SAS-style ambushes when we're going down a country lane, you know, all of this is just <coughs> confirming in our minds that what we are doing is right and correct, and we will never stop. It was two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, two Islamic jihadis were sent to Belmarsh for a very long time for planning and plotting to behead me. They even purchased a little, like, dummy type thing so they could practice chopping his head off in preparation for grabbing me. And I've said this time and time again in speech after speech. If you want my head, I would gladly tell you where I'll be at a certain time and place, and you can come and get it. <laughs> but I tell you now, I ain't no muck. You will not be walking away with my head. And that is a fact. This is what this movement's all about. We're not interested in conventional politics. We're not interested in the electoral rat race which has tangled up every other political party for so long, okay? People don't want that anymore. People don't want this smooth talking, you know, pinstripe, I've got a lot of pinstripe. But, uh, <laughs> people don't want the smooth talking, you, you know, super executive look. They don't want all of that. They want Trump. They want Marine Le Pen. They want Farage. They want Britain first. That's why do you think we've bypassed the British media. We've built up such a huge organic reach online. You see what happens is when the Sun newspaper